Welcome to an Empower PL video tutorial. We're going to be working in Google calendars. The first thing we're going to do is to learn a little bit about the calendar you already have. So what you see on the screen is a calendar on my account. So I'm logged into my personal um, Gmail account and everybody who has a Google account has a calendar by default. However, if you wanted to create more calendars, you certainly could do that. So over on the left, you'll notice that I have a lot of different calendars that I either own or have brought in as uh, shared calendars. So other people maybe might um, create some calendars and share them with you. And so you'd be able to see those other calendars as well. So to create a calendar, let's say you already have your primary calendar, but now you want to create a calendar for your classroom. Um, you can come down here to the bottom left and click on the plus button that you see here next to where it says other calendars. So we're going to click on the plus button and that's going to prompt open a, a little dialog box there. And then we're going to click on create new calendar. So I'm going to open that up and it's going to give me um, this new view here um, where I'm going to add my title. And of course, you can add a description if you'd like. So I'm going to call this a demo calendar so I know which one to delete um, later on. All right, so there's my demo calendar. So this could obviously be a homework calendar. It could be if you teach multiple classes, it could be your first period, second period, or however you have your blocks, A, B, et cetera. So you could decide um, how to title this based on what the calendar is for. You would then add a description if you'd like. You can um, obviously set the time zone. It will default automatically to the time zone that your computer system is already um, set to. So it'll default to that. Um, it'll also default, of course, to your Google accounts um, um, time zone that it's set to. So mine is uh, central time. So I'm going to leave it that way. And of course, you are the owner of this calendar that you're creating. So all you have to do now is just click on the blue button that says create calendar and that's gonna create that new calendar um, for you. So now when you wanna be able to find um, this demo, we can actually just come back over um, to uh, our calendar. We're just gonna go back and then in the uh, dropdown menu, because normally um, you'll see these um, listed um, in this way where they're not um, showing up. So if you see this view here, note, note that you can click on these little dropdown menus to be able to see all your calendars. So let's click on this one, my calendars. And you'll see that um, here is the demo calendar we just created. Now you'll notice that it does have a color associated with it, which you are um, able to change to whatever color you'd like. So you could certainly come in here and choose any of these colors here. I actually like that lavender color, so we're gonna leave it as such. Um, you can also go back into the calendar and set the settings and sharings for that particular calendar. Because if, for example, I wanted to um, use this calendar as a way to let parents know um, this is what's going on in my classroom, then I could certainly make that calendar public. And by making it public, that means that others can search for it, others can find it and be able to view it. And then you can decide, let me cancel that so I can show you, when you select this, you're gonna be able to use this drop-down menu to decide if people can see all of the events and all the event details in that, or if they can just see that you're busy or free or et cetera, right? So you do have some custom options um, in there. You can also share with just specific people. So let's say I had created this new calendar to be used with uh, colleagues of mine where we work together. We're all part of, let's say the English department at our school. And we wanted to create a calendar together so that we could, um, Put all of our meetings on there we could also list any events that are coming up that deal with anything that would impact our english classes etc and so i could actually add people and this would include anyone from um the anyone that would be a, a student per se and not a student a, a teacher within my department that i would then add and then again give certain rights to those particular um individuals so i'm going to cancel that and uh, zoom back out and let's just go back out. One last thing I wanna show you here uh, about calendars as you begin to create new calendars, you have the ability to toggle these on or off. And so if they have a check mark, that means those particular um, calendars are gonna be visible on your screen. If you toggle them off, you will not be able to see anything that's on that calendar on this particular screen here. So what you see on my screen are only the um, calendars that I have visible. And they do stack on top of each other. So as you create items, 
Uh, let me just do a demo here um, so that you can see. You'll notice I have two different calendars and they're just stacked up on top of each other within that day. And so it doesn't mean that um, by unchecking it that you're deleting the calendar, you're just toggling it from being visible. So see there you're seeing me click on my main calendar. That's the green color where it says demo. And if I uncheck it, you can no longer see items from that calendar. But if I check it again, those items pop up. So that's how that works. Um, hopefully this helps you in creating uh, calendars for whatever it is that you do at your school, whether if you're a teacher in the classroom and you wanna create calendars for uh, sharing with your students or with parents, or if you work um, on the district side and you wanna create calendars uh, for professional development or meetings, et cetera. Hopefully this has been helpful uh, in showing you how to create multiple calendars.